Bacteria don't have brains or nervous systems, but they quickly adapt to outside threats, which can lead to drug tolerance, resistance, and sometimes untreatable infections. Scientists didn't know exactly how bacteria colonies, like the one you see on your screen, adapted so quickly to external threats. But now they do, thanks to new research findings by a team of researchers at UC San Diego, led by my guest, Gural Swell, Associate Professor of Molecular Biology, and also joining us with the potential implications for drugs and society at large is biology professor Stanley Malloy, SDSU Dean of the College of Sciences. In uh, Gural, in layman's terms, exactly how does bacteria work as a social group for survival? So it's a, it's a beautiful question and, and surprising answer. So it turns out that when bacteria grow, they grow into a community. And by the very fact that they're growing into a community, some cells find themselves in different places within this community. Some are on the outside, some on the inside. And that creates differences and it creates some kind of social interactions. Well, let's take a look at that. We actually have video of these uh, bacteria growing. Is that what biofilm is? Is that what we're looking at here? Yes, you're looking at a biofilm, and uh, what you're looking at is the growth, the expansion of one of these communities, so the bacteria growing, but what's puzzling is periodically they stop growing. And why? So it turns out that there's a social conflict, and the social conflict is in the form that the outer cells protect the cells on the interior from attack, because attack comes from the outside, but the interior cells need the outer cells to once in a while stop eating all the food so they can get some food for themselves. And they can uh, withdraw a molecule from the outer cells and that stops the growth on the outer cells which allows some food to finally trickle in so that the interior cells, which are the protected cells, don't die. Because what good is it protecting cells that are dying? Right, so the inside is sort of reeling them in here, uh, the outside cells, so they don't overdo it. So Stanley, remind us of the current situation right now about bacteria adaptability and drug resistance. A a antibiotic resistance is becoming such a major problem throughout the U.S. It's about a $55 billion problem a year. And in the United States, about 23,000 people a year die of these infections. In some cases, there is no antibiotic you can use to treat people. So these colonies have been adapting, as uh, Gural was saying, but you've actually had personal experience with this, correct? Well, yes, recently I cut my leg pretty severely, developed a, an infection because it was in a part of my leg where the antibiotics couldn't permeate from oral antibiotics. I was actually in the hospital for about four days and went through a course of nine different antibiotics before the right antibiotic could be found. The right one meaning that the bacteria hadn't adapted to it, That's to it right. yet. Um, how could these new findings on bacteria change things? I'll start with you, Stanley. Well, what we desperately need are some new, clever approaches to prevent these kinds of infections. And what we've been doing is more of the same over and over again. And so I think these findings are going to give us new ways at looking at the bacteria that will allow us to develop new types of approaches. So new types of approaches being drugs, but uh, Gural, you've also said that the bacteria behavior that you observed uh, could be a teaching moment for humans in our society. How could that work out? Uh, well, because we also live in a society. And just like the bacteria, we have cooperation, so we can help each other in, in the bacterial community. The outer cells protect the interior cells, so that's cooperation. But at the same time, all the bacteria compete for food. And we, as a human society, also cooperate. But the people that we're cooperating with, sometimes we compete for them. Maybe we need to you know, fight over a parking spot at the supermarket or something. And so if we can figure out a way to resolve our social conflicts, just like the bacteria appear to be doing, it seems that we could also benefit as a community as a whole and, and be more prosperous. And uh, just going on that a little bit, Stanley, so how about in medicine? Is, is, this, uh, is this a very exciting development? Oh, I think it's very exciting development. I think this is the kind of thing where these basic discoveries will lead to opportunities in the biotech industry in San Diego that ultimately could lead to new types of drugs. All right, very exciting. Now I want to let folks know to see the bacteria behavior research uh, study. It's been published online today in the uh, journal Nature, so they can go to kpbs.org. Uh, researcher Gural Swell and Professor Stanley Malloy, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us.